band of ruthless criminals, the mysterious and masked gargoyle, backed by millions from an unknown power, attempts to wreck production for national defense. The police, baffled, seek the aid of Richard Wentworth, a famous amateur criminologist. Sometimes masquerading as the spider, thus concealing his identity from both criminals and the police, Wentworth pits his wits and strength against the gargoyle in preventing sabotage, subversive activities, and other crimes. Hey, you're a big help. Why don't you do what I tell you? Well, I'm trying to, Rita. Hey, hey! Well, what's keeping you, honey? Hey, it's nay on that honey stuff. Haney's a name, and this ain't no wedding cake I'm cutting into. Temperamental artist, huh? <laughs> you know, this is one of the boss's special jobs. You know the orders. Money ain't nothing. What we want is the plans and specifications. Now get them quick. When we get to the street, scatter and then we... Money's gonna be the death of you, Brown. You like it too well. Oh, it's a waste to leave it here. Well, we're leaving it here. This is orders. Well, we got what we want. Let's go. Who turned in the alarm? You know, Dick, you getting back into that spider outfit almost knocked me goofy. <laughs> I'm not over it yet. Oh, and incidentally, you're going to have an awful lot of explaining to do to a young lady by the name of Nita Van Sloan. You promised her the spider was dead, and for keeps. Any message, Jenkins? Yes, sir. Commissioner Kirk called, said he must contact you at once. Most important. Well, you didn't tell him I was out, did you? Oh, no, sir. I had Ram Singh put on record number 12. Oh. What record is that? That's the one where you're in the laboratory on the experiment and say you're too busy to talk. <laughs> Good, Jenkins. You always do the right thing. You better have Ram Singh join us. Sure will. I don't like the commissioner phoning so quickly. Looks like he's got a line on the spider already. He has. The janitor got a good look at him, and the spider left his trademark on the prisoner. 
You know, uh, Commissioner Kirk always did have a suspicion that you were the spider. Only a suspicion. No proof. Well, anyway, he's checking up, and I don't like it. You sent for me, Saeed? Yes, Ram Singh. I need the help of all of you in this crisis. Tonight's attempt convinces me that we're up against a strong organization headed by a powerful and brainy man. Robbing a safe don't take any brains. Yes, but this gang left thousands of dollars untouched. They were after only one thing, this. Few people knew what was in Holden's safe, yet they were after this and this alone. Now that you have it, what will you do with it? Give it back to the owner, of course. Oh, no, and have to explain how I got it? That will never do. Besides, it's too valuable to be put in jeopardy twice. We've got to guard this with our lives until we can turn it over to the government safely. The government? What's the government got to do with it? Everything. It's a government secret these men were after. A secret worth more than money in times like this. A secret that might mean the difference between defeat and victory in time of war. Go right, Jehoshaphat. And it's in that bag? What is it? You know too much for your own good already. Now, with this in our hands, there are bound to be many efforts to recover it. And we've got to stop them. It's a dangerous job. I wish he would come on. This waiting is driving me daffy. Calm down, Haney. The gargoyle took it standing up. He said it was just one of those things. Nobody's fault. He wasn't even sore. Then what are we here for? They got Brown. Now, Brown is money mad. He'll talk if they offer him enough. Well, what can he tell? He knows no more than the rest of us do, and that's exactly nothing. He knows you, me, and the rest of the boys. Now, the boss is right. We must take care of Brown. Hey, speak only when you're spoken to. is to wreck the defense program of this country at all costs. We're making progress. Sabotage is spreading throughout the industrial centers due to our efforts, the efforts of our workers. I don't need to repeat that your last operation was a failure due to the unexpected arrival of one called the Spider. That is of no account. We will take care of that publicity-seeking hound in due time. But this is important. One of our men is in the hands of the police. We must rescue him to make it impossible for him to talk again. Be gone! You're right, Holden. This is too big for local police. The G-men should handle it. Impossible. Once they learn of my loss, I'm finished. Why, I have a $500,000 bound up for the guarantee of the completion of my contract. There must be some other way. My George, you're right. I know the very man. And while we don't always agree, he's clever and he's trustworthy. Yes, sir. Now, get me Mr. Richard Wentworth at once. Yes, sir. Now, see here, Holden. You can't hold out on this man. Tell him everything. Follow his instructions, and if he can't help you, take my advice and call in the government men. The country's needs comes ahead of the dollar sign. Very well, Commissioner. I place myself in your hands, whatever you say. Good morning, Miss Eden. Morning, Jenkins. Mr. Wentworth is here, I hope. Yes, just finishing breakfast. Good. Uh, oh, uh, Jenkins, I suppose you know what he intends to do. Well, uh, I have an idea. Well, we must stop it. All of us together can do it. I'm afraid you overestimate our ability. He's uh, stubborn. Well, so am I. I'll change his mind for him. Oh, good morning, Nita. Good morning. It's not a good morning. And I warn you, don't try to salt soak me. I've made up my mind. You hear that, Jackson? Nita's made up her mind. <laughs> Jenkins, some breakfast for Nita, please. Oh, uh, nothing but coffee, thank you. Oh, here it is. Sleep well? Not a wink. None of us will if you persist in going back to work. Please don't. I ask you, please. Such a pretty please, too. So hard to resist. Oh, Nita, I have no choice in the matter. I promised Kirk I'd get on the job, the biggest one I ever tackled. All the jobs you tackle are big. Not as big as this one. These are troubled times. Each and every one of us must do his bit to defeat those people who are trying to destroy this country by sabotage. Come on. Be a good soldier, Nita. All right, when do we stop? Now you're Good talking. girl. <laughs> Blake and McQuaid has a date, pronto. I think I better get word to him. Graham Singh has everything ready. I'll get the car. Good. Jenkins, you guard the Citadel while I'm gone. Yes. And what am I to do? You guard Jenkins. Oh. <laughs> Jenkins, he can't be serious with this thing. Uh, 
Everything's all right, warrior. Miss Nita is in full accord. Then everything will be what you call Jake, eh? Oh, very Jake. Your things are all ready, Sahib. Thanks. I won't be a minute. You were so dead against the spider going back to work. What made you change your mind? Well, when he convinced me that it was for the good of our country, I couldn't very well refuse. Love of country is a wonderful thing. Yes, but what I don't understand is why he's making up this Blinky McQuaid. Because Blinky McQuaid has a circle of acquaintances that we could never hope to reach. And I hope through him to be able to get a line on this new gang that's creating so much havoc in our defense industries. But that takes men with brains. Would they come from the underworld? Well, they usually start from there, and so will I, because I want to question that prisoner that Kirk has locked up. Hey, lady, I'm down on my luck. Could you give me 50 bucks for a cup of coffee? <laughs> Well, I suppose I should break a bottle of champagne over your head to launch Blinky McQuaid on his career again. No, no, a thousand times no. <laughs> well, Lita, I'm on my way. Now, if anyone calls, be sure to put on the right record. All right. Well, Ram Singh, I've done my best. Long time no see. Well, I ain't glad to see you, boy. Thanks, Ed. Ah, Pete. Hi. Thought you'd reformed. Hey, cut the wisecrack. This is a wrong rap. You I see, I'm... All right. I'll Hello, be... Charlie. Hi, ah, Blinky. They got you again, Snapper. Hey, give me a room with a bath, will you? I ain't had one since I was here before. All right, Blinky. This is the best I can do. Well, you ought to be ashamed to admit it. Well, I won't be here long. I'll be out of here as soon as my mouthpiece gets the machinery working. I know, Blinker. I know. Hey, Mug. As long as we're going to be cellmates, we might as well get acquainted. My name is Blinky McQuaid. Mug. Thanks. That ain't nothing. I'm lucky they didn't take him away from me. Country's going to the dogs. Guys like me ain't got no protection. You don't see any of them big guys taking the rap, do you? Of course not. Well, it's every man for himself, and I ain't taking it. I know plenty, see, and unless they spring me, I'm gonna yap so loud this burger's gonna split wide open, and the big boys know it too. You're lucky. They ain't give me no chance to get word to anybody. You're the first one I've seen. Ah, don't worry about that. I'll get word out for you when they spring me. You will? Uh... That's white of you. If I spilled anything to you, they'd knock us both off. Damn and who else? I ain't scared. I'm tough. I'll get word out for you. Nothing done. I ain't taking no chances. What's your rap? Robbery. Murder, maybe. One of the gang was knocked off. Tough luck, too. We were promised five G's apiece. Five G's? Gee, that's out of my class. My gang is pikers. I've been working for buttons. I'd sure like to get with an outfit like yours. I'd go places. Uh-uh. Nothing to... Listen, buddy. I'm going to give you a sales talk. I'm going to sell... Uh-uh. Myself. None of that. No. Uh-uh. I'm afraid not. I've talked too much already. All right. Be stubborn. You were right, Winky. They sprung you. Better get going before somebody changes their mind. Ah, don't rush me. I gotta make my adieus. Hey, any message to go out? It's your last chance. No. I'll wait a little longer. And if nothing happens, I'll talk, and I'll talk plenty. Well, so long. Oh, I'm me. <laughs> so long, Sap. Well, any luck? A little. I just got back from an interview with Brown. He's scared. I couldn't get much out of him. Keeping him incommunicado will work in time, 
Have there been any more efforts to get to him? <laughs> a lawyer has been yelling his head off, threatens habeas corpus and what have you. Who is he? Respectable to all appearances. I put a tracer on him. We expect to get his background before long. Good. I found there is an organization, a big one. You keep Brown stewing and he'll talk. What did you find on it? Oh, nothing much. Nothing much is right. Some keys, money, pencil, match cover, and a metal disc. Boy, if this could talk, it'd probably tell us plenty. Yeah, it looks like an O on there. Funny thing about that, I found another one on the dead man. Letter A this time. Well, it's obvious they're identification discs. Uh, that crook was well healed. Have you noticed that money? Holden identified that as part of the money from his safe. Is he sure? Positive. He checked the serial numbers against his records. <laughs> what gets me is why Brown didn't take it all. There were thousands there, yet he only took a few. Yeah. I've got it, man. Money. The gang were ordered to leave the money alone and to get only what they were sent for. But Brown couldn't resist. He took only part of it so that it wouldn't be missed. He double-crossed the man he was working for to get this money for himself. Well, that's good reasoning, but how will it help? He's scared to death, but I think money will tempt him. We'll offer him some, more than he's ever seen before, and a promise of protection. He might fall for it. <laughs> and who's going to put up all this money? Holden, of course. It's his jam. Now, you have Brown and the money at my house tonight after dinner. You and Brown come alone. All right, whatever you say. Say, do you mind if I take this stuff back to my lab? My instruments might tell us something about it. Uh, go ahead. I suppose you know, Wentworth, that this is a little bit irregular, to say the least. Necessity makes us overlook technicalities. Well, I'm on my way. Now, don't forget, tonight's visit must be a secret. I'll be there with Brown at nine sharp. Good. That's him after... Now it'll save a lot of trouble later. Somebody's trailing us. Let's give them a run for it. Okay. Slow down and I'll try for a tire. They're taking care of for time anyway. It's a fine thing. He didn't know we was trailing him, huh? Ah, dry up. No harm done. Well, you speak for yourself. I'm a wreck. Look at my nose. It improves your looks, if anything. I think we'll get something here. Evidently, Brown wrote some sort of memo on the flap and then erased it. This infrared process brought it out clear. Look. It spells Annadale with some figures after it. And that's what I make of it. Come on. Return to headquarters. I'll call you when I want you. I think I'll keep this just in case. Well, that must be Kirk. He's always on time. Jackson, you stay here with Nita. Is Ram singing his post as ordered? Yes, sir. Keep your fingers crossed. Ah, good evening, Commissioner. Right on time. Take him in there and make him comfortable. Come on, you. Jenkins, understand we're not to be disturbed. Right. Commissioner, I think we can dispense with the handcuffs. No man can feel at ease with them on. Thanks. What's the big idea? Believe it or not, Brown, we're trying to be your friends. You're in a bigger jam than you know. It might be well for you to talk. Ah, cut the double talk. I'm the guy that originated the three little monkeys. See nothing, 
hear nothing, and sing it. You double-cross your boss and you'll know it. You'll never live to come to trial. Ah, hooey. I know something your boss doesn't know. You took some money from Holden State. You're lying, Wentworth. I don't lie. You took the money in your orders, but to leave it alone. How did you know that? All right, Commissioner. You tell him. He might believe you. Listen, you fool. Every entrance to that jail was covered by your pals, ready to blast you down. Why didn't we bring them in? <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because like you, they're nothing. Just tools of the one we want. We've got them all tabbed. Here's enough money to make you independent for life. We'll protect you. You can go anywhere you want, or none of your pals can find you. It's your one chance. Take it, or we'll turn you loose to be picked up in a gutter full of slugs. Well, what do you want me to do? Name the man from whom you take your orders. The one responsible for all the sabotage in this country. Why, well, I don't know it. We don't see him. Ah, uh, you must meet somewhere. Tell us what you know. We'll handle the rest. All right. I'll talk. I ain't taking the rap. I'll start with the meeting place. It ain't easy to get there. Oh, skip the details. Where is it? Well, you go down to the corner. <laughs> Help, Kurt. The others here? Yes, sir. Some time ago. Your instructions were carried out to the letter. Only those on your list were admitted. Good. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. That must be Wentworth now. I'm glad you're here. They were getting very uneasy. All right, don't miss the time. Now get at it. Right. Gentlemen, I'm sure that you all know Mr. Wentworth. Yeah, how are you? I know that you are very anxious to learn why you were called here. Mr. Wentworth is back of this case, and I'm going to let him explain. Thank you. Gentlemen, we all know that our country is facing a grave crisis. We're engaged in a program of national defense that is the largest the world has ever known. All of you are manufacturing or financing something vital to that program. Recent events have convinced me that an element, a dangerous element, will stop at nothing to prevent you from making progress. There's only one word for it, gentlemen. Sabotage. Mr. Van Sloan, you're dealing in aviation, a vital need. You, more than any of the others, are concerned with sabotage. I appreciate the gravity of the situation. We all of us have experienced setbacks in carrying out government contracts. Have you any suggestions? Yes. You must check the background of every one of your employees. Eliminate any who object to investigation or whose past is not an open book. Mr. Westfall. Yes, Mr. Wentworth. Your chemical plant is also vital. What I said before goes for you, too. And you, Mr. Cartwright? Count me in. I'm willing to cooperate 100%. And I know I speak for all. Isn't that right, Mr. Gaylord? I'm sure you do. Every financial firm in the city will cooperate. What do you think, Mr. McLeod? Well, uh, I'm puzzled. About what, Mr. McLeod? Well, we are not the only ones engaged in government work in this district. Why aren't the others here? I can explain that. We thought it best to interview a few of you at a time. It would be dangerous for too large a group to gather here. <laughs> come, come, Wentworth. Surely no one would attempt to do us bodily harm. Mr. Holden, I'm afraid that they would stop at nothing. Why? 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 
Gentlemen, gentlemen, believe me, I'm not exaggerating. This menace is far greater than you imagine. Him, all right. To where are you taking me? You'll find out. Government business. Person there's telephone. This is Annadale. Airport. Mile down the road. Did you say Annadale? Yep, Annadale. About a mile. Get me there quick. You got him all right. Yeah. Now you go to 10,000 feet and fly straight to the boss. I savvy. Load him in. Bring him on. Thanks a lot. I can make it from here. I won't go. I tell you. I won't go. That. No, you can't make me. I won't go. I tell you. Wait a minute. Now don't make us get rough. Because when we get rough, we get rough. All right. I'm helpless. I'll go. Wait! I'll take that prisoner. Shed those guns, all of you. Hurry up! Get over here, Holden. This man's going with me. And the first man who tries to follow, I'll drop. for this ship now. Meddling fool, I'll finish him. Not here, he'd be found. It must look like an accident. Put Wentworth in the plane. I don't get it. Sure you do. Wentworth's gone with you. Didn't I say it must look like an accident? <laughs> so he's got ideas of his own. All right, load him in. He's right. The boss don't like changing plans. All right, I'm off.
going to happen to the man strapped in the chair? That gangster at the switch has the answer. Is it a warning message that will be played into the telephone mouthpiece? Is the police secretary fooled? Don't miss the fatal time bomb. Next week's exciting chapter of The Spider Returns.